Hi, my name is George Garcia with Fusion 360. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a 3D package for your footprint. Now again, we have the options like we've seen before, but I do want to highlight one difference here. 3D packages are usually associated with a footprint. So besides the button up here, you also have the option to right click on your footprint and create new 3D model from here, or if the 3D model you want to use is already within the electronics library, you can attach a copy of the existing 3D model. So these two options are good to be aware of. Um, they will come into play if you already have 3D models inside your library. You may often find yourself just reusing models that are already there because many components use the same types of footprints, footprints are standardized, so the 3D models will be more or less standardized as well. But let's go ahead and make a brand new one. So I'm going to click here, create new package, and you're going to see that it takes us straight to a modeling environment. Now modeling a 3D model from scratch is something that's addressed in many other Fusion 360 videos, so I'm not going to use that option today. We are going to use a package generator. But I do also want to show you that if you already have, let's say, a Fusion 3D model or a step file, all you have to do to use it is you go over here, you right click, and you say insert into current design. Okay, so if you get a step model from a manufacturer, which is preferable, it's always preferable to have a model either from the manufacturer or something that's vetted you can upload the step model into the 3D models folder and then just right click on it and insert into current design in order to be able to use it in your library. Now that's not what we're going to do today. We're, today we're going to use the package generator. So you'll notice the package generator is a way of generating 3D models as well as footprints for a host of standardized component geometries. Now the one we're interested in, the SOIC, is one of the standard geometries supported currently. And we're constantly adding more. So I'm going to find it. Here we go. SOIC. I'm going to select it. And you'll notice that the generator has all these values that we can just input and it will take care of the rest. Now you'll notice that there's separate tabs for, for the 3D model, for the footprint, and if we need to do a special thermal pad. Okay, since we're not doing any of these, we can focus just on the package tab. Now, one thing I want to highlight here, the letter convention that we're using is the IPC standard. However, like I mentioned in the previous video, data sheets don't have a standard formula. So the letters and the labels used by any given manufacturer may deviate from what you see here. So you have to be very careful to make sure you match up dimensions. Now in our case, for this component, the dimensions we need are on page 28 of the data sheet for the LM833. And all you have to do is basically specify the different parameters you need here. So this is an 8-pin. Pad shapes are going to be rectangular. Density level. Now density level is something that the IPC specifies. And there's three density levels. There's nominal, which is normal. There's most, and there's least. So nominal is going to give you the standard pad dimensions in the footprint. Most will give you the largest acceptable dimensions in the, in the footprint for the pads. And why would you want to deviate from nominal? So most is handy for example for hand rework, so if you intend to make your components by hand and solder them onto your board by hand, then the largest pads possible are going to make that easier for you. Where does least come into play? In very high density designs where every square millimeter is at a premium, setting density level to least is going to give you the smallest feasible footprint for each of these pads. So this is going to be the most conservative when it comes to using real estate on your board. So if you have a very dense product, tiny, with a lot of components on it, you may want to go with least. When in doubt, just leave it at nominal. And the rest of the process is just filling out the values here. So I'm not going to bore you with filling out all these little 
uh, rectangles. So through the magic of editing, you'll be seeing it all properly filled out in a second. Okay, so now we have everything filled out according to the data sheet. You'll see this parameter here, map cell screen to body. Again, it's similar. So using the body dimensions, it'll give you a nice space around it. So if you want to have a little bit of wiggle room, nominal is normal. Minimum is as tight as possible so that you use as little space real estate as possible on the board. Default is perfectly fine if you don't have a preference. So I'm going to say add. What you're going to see is it's going to parametrically create the model. So every step that led to the creation of this model is down here in the timeline, and it can be individually edited and adjusted. So once we're done and we're happy with it, which I am, I'm going to click Finish. Now you're going to see this and ask you, do you want to finish the package and add it to the library? I'm going to say yes. Do I want to save? I do want to save. Now, notice the location. Libraries, 3D models. Make sure it goes to that 3D models folder. If you forget, it's not the end of the world. You can always move it, and Fusion will keep track of the references. But it's always good to double check and not have to do work, extra work later. So I'm going to hit Save. Okay, and what you're going to see is we have the package under Packages, and we have an additional footprint. Because when you run the package generator straight from this button, you'll also get the footprint as an added bonus from filling out the values. So it's huge time saver. When possible, use the package generator. If that's not feasible, try to get a step model from the manufacturer. If that's not feasible, then you can model the part yourself within Fusion 360 following the direction and other guides. Thank you very much for watching. In the next video, we'll show you how to make a device out of all these assets. Thank you very much.